comic stew. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode six of the comic stew. Uh, we have a special New Year's uh, short show for you. I'm Aaron, and as always, I'm joined by my permanent fellow host, Mr. JC Argetsinger. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's going great. Uh, I got you on video now, so I can just watch your face, <laughs> and it's it's really is classic. You like that? You can you can see all the things that our viewers at home can't see. Well, I will say this: there's a lot of beard there, my friend. Well, that's what you're into. So, hey, you uh, did not. How long were you on vacation for? Ten days, something nine, nine, ten days. Ah, oh, you gotta have a nice long vacation. I was only out of town for like three days, and it was not long enough. Vacations are never long enough. No, they're not. Well, how was your holiday, by the way? Most of the people listening are still on vacation, though, so they can't complain. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, mine. Yeah, was, how was your holiday? Mine was fun. Um. Went to New York City, went upstate to see the family, got some cool shit from Santa Claus. Yeah, what'd you get? Uh, I got Super Fight, which is kind of, I guess, like Cards Against Humanity, but with superheroes. Oh, yeah? Uh, with a lot of the add-on packs, which have like vulgarities and stuff like that. So that sounds like fun. Nice. I got the TARDIS, so you can be jealous, because I know how much you love Doctor Who, Aaron. The, the TARDIS, what is that? Time and relative dimension in space. What, what is that, though? Like, what did you get? What, what is it? The TARDIS. But what is it? Literally, we just lost a thousand yeah. I have not watched a single episode of Doctor Who. I have spent my life staying away from that show. That's because you've made poor life decisions. Okay. Well, like, is, 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 I'm is, unboxing is, it for you. Okay, okay. Is it like the time machine or something? Yes. Okay. Oh, you got the Funko Pop? Nice. The Tardis. Ah. Look at that! Yes, it's uh, so it's, it's like a, it's like a phone booth. It's bigger on the inside. Okay, but it's it's like a phone booth they step into and travel through time. Kind of. You might have seen a movie that ripped it off a little bit. You probably saw that movie. Um, what movie was that? Really. I, I can't think. I can't think right now. I just got back from vacation. Uh, I have friends in town. I have a lot on my mind. I just, we want to get this show out really quick. Bill I and have Ted. Something excellent adventure. What was the movie? I, I just said it. Oh, Bill and Ted. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're gonna hate me too. I, I haven't seen that. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't seen that movie, but I haven't. Might have just gotten fired. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> I don't know why. I really don't. Like, I should have seen that movie, but I, for There's whatever reason, that. I think I'm probably part of it on TV. I don't know. One of them has George Carlin in it, or maybe both of them have George Carlin in it. I'm a little bit drunk right now. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, what, what you sipping on? I am, uh... Sweet sip, the devil. I'm sipping on some vino. Ooh. Some vino. Nice. I'm like a bottle of wine, then. Are you? Nice. Yeah, I'm switching it up this week, and I'm going a little uh, Sammy Adams. Oh, the, yeah. Um, it's out of season, but I'm drinking the summer ale. You're playing me today, basically. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Addle-brained and all. Well, uh, JC, did you get anything else for Christmas that you want to talk about? Or was that it? Just the TARDIS. Just your tardy. I got some photography equipment, but that's kind of not on, on topic and boring. Nerd alert. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> uh, 
speaking of which, we should um we, we should remind people if they want to visit your Instagram, it's uh it's just your name, right? Just my name. Yeah. Actually, I think I got probably the coolest thing, which is Star Wars duct tape. And oh. You, and if you know anything about duct tape, duct tape is much like the Force. It has a light side and a dark side, and it binds the universe together. Very nice. Well. Thank you for joining us, people. Uh, we wanted to get this episode out uh, for New Year's. Um, a little short episode, but I uh, want to put something out there for you. Um, so, just diving in, um, we have our first official photo of Doctor Strange. JC, what did you think of that on the uh, Entertainment Weekly cover? I was amazed by how much it looked like the artist renderings that people were putting out there. That was my first impression. Yeah. I thought it was fake until I saw that it was from on entertainmentweekly.com. Yeah. Because it looked exactly like what people were photoshopping. Mm -hmm. Which to me means they did it right to the fans' view of what it should be. We'll see what the movie looks like, but it looks cool. Well... I'm not, me, a, I'm not a big Doctor Strange fan, I won't lie. Yeah. But oh, really? Not a big Doctor Strange okay. fan. Like, I haven't read a ton of Doctor Strange. I like Doctor Strange. I just... Did yeah. you ever read... Probably one of my fa one of my favorite Doctor Strange stories is the one by Brian K. Vaughan. It's called um, The Oath. It's a like, five-issue miniseries. Yeah. That was a good one. If you want to just cherry pick a good Doctor Strange story, that would be a good one. Yeah, I still what, what your what Brian K. What, is it recent? Is it? Ten, um, it probably came out about ten years ago. Sounds familiar, but I, like I said, I can't. Yeah, I don't Marcos recall. Martin does the art. It's really good. I've read some Doctor Strange stuff, but I've just because there isn't necessarily usually a consistent title. It's not one that I read as often. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, the new Doctor Strange series by Jason Aaron and Chris Bacalo um, has been getting a lot of high praise. Uh, I have yet to read it, but I'm really looking forward to getting into that. Um, but just, yeah, I was just going to say about the costume on the cover. Um, yeah, it looks like it was just ripped straight out of the comics, which is really cool. I'm, I'm kind of surprised they went that route because it is kind of a very outlandish looking costume, but they looked like they pretty much just, just got it, you know, colors and everything. I mean, it's, it's kind of a garish costume, but I mean, this is a movie that's very, um, I mean, it, it, it's it's a. I know you're trying to talk. I love having you having you on video now, JC. I mean, th this movie is just gonna, I think, be very out there and just go cr in some crazy places. So I think having the hero just wear wearing the regular garb is uh is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Go what ahead. I what I wanted to say was, it is a status symbol for where Marvel movies are now that they can put a character in essentially original costume and people are going to be excited and want to go see the movie as opposed to 10 years ago where if you had put Hugh Jackman in yellow and, you know, a yellow Wolverine costume, yeah, no one would have gone to see the movie, whereas you could do that today and people would go and watch that. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe, we'll maybe, maybe not the yellow costume. Maybe the the tan costume. I think they'd go watch the yellow costume. Oh, they they would. Oh, they definitely would. But I, I still don't think the yellow I, costume would look good on screen. I have to say, Wolverine might be a bad example because they've made a like t so many Wolverine movies already, and some of them have been of questionable quality. So yeah, that might be the wrong example. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh, it looks cool. I'm I'm excited. Um, one of my favorite bad guy actors is uh, playing the villain. Who is the villain? Uh, the villain. It, I don't think they've announced his name, but they have announced that Mads Mikkelsen is going to be playing the antagonist. Cool. Yeah, there's going to be some. There's some really good actors in that. I mean, that I'm, I'm, I'm down for the Cumberbatch. So yeah. 
Well, I mean, th- l- 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 uh, we have in this movie, I mean, this is kind of like an all star cast. They have obviously uh, Cumberbatch, they have Mads Mikkelsen, who I think is a really underrated great actor. Uh, Tilda Swinton is in it, Rachel McAdams is in it, right? I believe that's right. Yeah, so it has a great cast. I haven't seen anything that Scott Derrickson has done, but uh, I like that he's coming from a horror background. Like, I kind of think that's the right decision to go in um, direction-wise with, uh, with a movie that's heavily based in magic. You know what it reminds me of it is Thor, which had a number of really big names that had no business being in a Marvel movie. Yeah. For, and then just showed up in a Marvel movie. Yeah. I think it's really cool that, like, like you were saying, you know, it, it is it is a testament to the power of of what you know the audience Marvel is drawing. They can kind of go very comic booky with something like that. Um, I think I think the biggest testament to that really is um, the last movie that came out, uh, Ant Man. I mean, don't you agree that like since when that movie was a success, like they were basically just like, well, we can just do anything now. Yes and no. Um, I mean, I think it's definitely a status symbol for them that they can do things outside of their comfort zone. But mm-hmm. I think I think it didn't do Iron Man money. No, but it was it was more successful than they were expecting. Right. No, I agree with that. Uh, I just it's it's the sort of thing where they have to be careful still. Yeah, no, I, they for sure. Much, they have to be much more careful and targeted with these kind of properties because you have to do it really right to get big money. Yeah, well, you and and with these new characters that are being introduced, I mean, you have to there there's so many d- different uh genres they're hitting with the these movies now and obviously the the first movie they have to get that right for that character to become a franchise right yeah i mean they've obviously tried to they tried to do a daredevil movie and they screwed up daredevil well marvel didn't do that but you know what i'm saying yeah no of course same with fantastic four you can you can easily kill a franchise with yeah making a bad product so I think they are just very cognizant of making a good product. Yeah. And and they know that it doesn't really matter what that product is as long as it's good. Yeah. I agree. It has cool special effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, What's the next Marvel movie we're getting, by the way? Is it Civil War? Civil War is the one that I've seen the trailer for. Uh, Yeah. I guess that would be it, right? There's, there's always two movies that come out every year, so it's... I mean, they're filming Doctor Strange now, right? Or did they already film it? So... So here is the Phase 3 lineup is we will get we will get Civil War in May and Strange... We'll get some Strange in November. Nice. Then uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 in the following May followed by the next Thor movie. Followed and then Black by, Panther after that, right? In that, that'll be in the same year. So they'll have three that year. Oh, Black Panther's going to be that year too. Okay, cool. Um, then... What about then, the Ant-Man sequel? Then it'll be Avengers Infinity Part War Part 1, Captain Marvel, and Inhumans in the same year, and then Avengers Infinity War Part 2 the following year in 2019. Is that 2019? Oh, I I thought Inhumans was going to be like 2019. Allegedly, it's November 2018, but, you know, these things have moved around a bit, so that might not be the most current, up-to-date, accurate thing, because I've seen a few different things, so... Just looking on there, what are your two most anticipated Marvel flicks? If you only could see two. So... Well, okay, so there's also the Spider-Man Marvel movie that's also been now slotted in there. Um, just to throw that out there, that it could be cool if it's a Marvel Spider-Man movie as opposed to a Sony Spider-Man movie. 
Mm -hmm. um, so you you take the Spider Man as one? No, I was just throwing that out there as well. Uh, I think Doctor Strange because okay. it's, because it's a big departure. Because as you, we you know, Cumberbatch is great, and the cast tell us when you know all these people are great. I think it could be an actually different, unique, fun movie. I think out of the rest of them, Civil War trailer looked really cool. Yeah. But I've seen that it's Avengers mm -hmm. fighting. It's Avengers fighting each other, which is cool. Uh, you know, same like Avengers Infinity War Part One and Two. I don't know. It does. Come on, pick one. Pick I'm, one. I'm. I'm. I'm putting you on the spot. I'm speaking about these things because. I've, what I'm trying to tell you is I've seen those movies. Same with, like, Thor. Yeah. Lots of fun characters, but I've seen them. So I'm more prone to say either probably Captain Marvel. Okay. Probably wow. Captain, because Guardians of the Galaxy, great movie. But I've seen Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, probably be a lot of fun. But I've seen it already in a movie. I've seen most of the things that are on that lineup in a movie already. Yeah. I haven't seen Captain Marvel in a movie. Yeah. So that seems more interesting because I just haven't ever seen it. Yeah. If I could only see two, I would say Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel because they're new franchise. New franchise. Yeah. Well, I actually agree with you. Uh, I would pick two that uh, are, are new franchises as well. Um, the ones I'm most excited for are uh, Black Panther and Inhumans. I think both of those, I mean, the both, like, Black Panther's just an awesome character, and that's why, I mean, Doctor Strange, I like, uh, he's he's not, he's not my favorite character, he's a cool character, but, um, I mean, I think the movie's gonna be good, but I'm really excited for Black Panther, um, I think T'Challa is one of the best characters Marvel really has, and uh, the Inhuman Royal Family is just a really cool dynamic, so I really hope they treat that movie with a lot of respect, and, uh, you know, crew it up right because, like, Black Bolt is one of my favorite Marvel characters, like, hands down. Love that character. So, I, I'm definitely hopeful for those two movies. We shall see. I, I feel like I also know less about those movies and those characters. So, yeah. Well, well, I'm wait. surprised you picked Captain Marvel. Like, I kind of think she's a boring character, to be honest. Like, she's a, like a test pilot. I mm. I agree that I don't, but I've heard more things about the movie. Uh -huh. so. And it's yeah. all it's all speculation, but I've just heard more buzz about the movie. Uh, so it could all be false, but I've haven't heard buzz about Black Panther and Inhumans, where I've heard people at least talking that about people for the Captain Marvel movie. So, right there, you go. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, well, that's, uh, so that was interesting. Um, completely changing gears. Uh, did you see that, uh, Chris Nolan is supposedly circling his next project and it's been announced what, uh, the, the film is supposedly about? I saw it was, looks like a World War II epic kind of movie. Sounds cool to me. I think it's a very interesting and dramatic change for him. I think he'll be obviously very adept at it because he's a very skilled filmmaker, but most of his stuff has more science fiction-y elements to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to see his work in a more literal and historical aspect, but I think it'll, it could be his, his Oscar-nominated movie type of deal. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting he's doing a war movie. I yeah, I for some reason I just never thought of him uh doing a war movie, but it's it's cool. It's it's a different it's it's a subject that I haven't really uh seen tackled in another movie. I could be wrong, but um it's the uh it's about the Dunkirk evacuation where a ton of soldiers and I think uh like French citizens were rescued from uh like off the coast of Dunkirk and like brought across the English Channel and they like basically 
they they were expecting to just be like annihilated by German troops and um, the Allied forces were able to rescue like a ton of them. So sounds like it's a cool subject to uh, tackle in a flick. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just a little story I saw uh, that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I still haven't seen. I know I'm, this is just the theme of the show, but I have not seen Interstellar yet. I haven't either. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I saw I heard the, good I things. Saw, I guess. I saw make the Martian them, again. Oh, you did you? Um, today actually. Oh really? Uh, what on the plane? Such a great movie. Such a great book. Such a great. Did you movie. see it on the plane? Yeah. Oh nice. What other movies did you see over your break? Well, I saw a little movie called Star Wars: The Force Awakens so for a third it? time. Yeah. For a third time. Yeah. Uh, I, else? I won't lie. That movie gets better and better. Okay, yeah, I still have to see it for a second time, and I meant to see it over the break, and I just really didn't have enough time. I was going to see that, I was going to see Creed, and I was going to see In the Heart of the Sea, uh, and I didn't want to see that in the Heart of the Sea. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I heard kind of mixed things about that, but I'll give Ron Howard a shot. I, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of his. Uh, his, his, especially his uh, greatest uh, filmmaking triumph. Is that what they're calling? I know, I know you know what I'm talking about. It is, of course, Willow. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> you, you can love that movie all you want. Oh, I love but it. But it won't be his greatest filmmaking triumph. <sighs> Probably, but I can still love it. Um, I saw, let's see, I did see a few. Actually, I just saw, um, actually, I saw the new Entourage movie. That's all I saw, just at, at my buddy's house. So we're going to have to do some editing right here. Why? Cut that part out because you said you watched the Entourage movie, and I don't believe that's believable. <laughs> I did. I, I watched it. So what, what you're trying to tell me is you're you're the one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I was one of uh, ten people that saw that movie. But I didn't see it in the theater, obviously, which, uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess that movie pretty much bombed, didn't it? I think so. Yeah. You know what? It made me realize everything wrong with the show because it's all crammed into two hours and in like two hours really is way too long or maybe it's an hour and a half, but like it, it's way too long uh, for, for entourage. Like 30 minutes was perfect for that show. It's way, it's way too much entourage. Like if you're binging first season of entourage and you watch four episodes in a row, you're like, I probably need to go like shower. Yeah. 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 No, it's just, it's just funny because it's like, uh, you, you watch the show, like that movie and you just, you're just like, well, it's, it is so. It really is so formulaic, and I really did enjoy that show. But uh, it is just so formulaic. I also, uh, I also saw Inside Out, which I had. Oh, cool! How's that? It's great. I mean, it's Pixar. It's it's it not. I mean, it's not their their best, but it, it was very good. Nice. I won't. I won't put it into that that top 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 tier of their stuff, but it's a mm -hmm. good one. It's definitely an interesting look at the way people work. Favorite Pixar movie, go. Come on, that's easy. Up. I, I'm i torn between Up, Wally. Yeah, Wally's great. Yeah. And The Incredibles. Yeah. Sorry, the first, like, the first 30, 45 minutes of The Incredibles is some of the most sad and amazing cinema ever put in a child's movie ever mm -hmm. same with the same with the first half hour of up too um but but it's superheroes so it makes it makes it more relatable to me yeah i uh i might as well continue my trend and uh admit that i haven't seen the incredibles all I right know. i know i know just well, slap me through the the the, the phone just do it you literally have homework for next week. I know. I know. I actually did get that movie, so I am going to watch it very soon. I mean, that's Hopefully. that's that's probably a top five comic or superhero movie. 
Yeah, I've I've heard that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 definitely one of their best. It's Brad Bird. I mean, mm-hmm. you've seen Iron Giant, right? No, that's another one that I know. I know that's another one that I actually uh, picked up recently. So I have it now. I have it. I, I I've heard really good things about the Iron Giant. I the two animated movies on my docket: Incredibles and Iron Giant. I'm so disappointed. Promise. I'm so disappointed. I got homework. I know. They they, uh, recently, they recently came out with like a really cool full size toy of the Iron Giant. Mm-hmm. Very expensive. Really want it. Nice. Didn't get it though because it was really expensive, and I'm a little bit too old to spend that much on a toy. Mm, yeah. Not, not really. Not really. I just. Yeah. I, I, I yeah because I definitely did not spend a hundred dollars on the Batman the animated series Batmobile that just came out. <laughs> um, I definitely did not do that, but uh, it, it, if I did, man, that would be great to have. I feel like this one is like a lot more than that. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I think I may have actually seen that because uh, they were talking about it. It's, it might be like three hundred bucks or something. Um, yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like it's something to that kind of extent. Yeah, that Batmobile though, that was totally worth it. Let me just tell you. Oh, I mean, I would still like, I still want to get that. I just don't think it makes, you know, practical sense. Yes. Did you see the Deadpool trailer, the new one? I only saw the actually actually saw the uh, the 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 Green Band trailer. And yes, yeah, so I I just looked up. It's three hundred, which is a a bit much. For, I told you it was three hundred. What what? You, all you need to do is just listen to me. But I wanted to to you know fact. You wanted check. to independently verify. They oh, all I see. Th- that same uh, boy creator has some really sick Ninja Turtles toys, by the way, that are. $150 Ninja Turtle toys. Wow. Oh, I really want them, though. Yeah. Aaron so you just saw that. the Green Band trailer for your old Deadpool? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I saw I saw the uh, the hard R one, and uh, I'm definitely stoked about that movie. Um, I don't really – I've never really read the Deadpool comic because I just can't take, like, that character – like, a lot of that character. But – um. I'm uh, uh, like two hours of Deadpool is gonna be perfect for me. I think it looks really good. Yeah, no, I think it. I think it's the kind of thing that'll be great. And I really hope they only do one movie. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. I doubt they will if it's successful. I know but... they won't, but you know that the second movie will be god awful. Uh, I mean, will it? I mean, X Men Two was the best X Men movie. Yes, and and uh, Hellboy Two was the best Hellboy movie. But generally, we agree. Generally, <laughs> that's not the case, and especially with a character like Ant Man Two, when they make Ant Man Two, is going to be terrible. Do you really think so? Yes. Oh, I don't think so. I feel like with characters of that ilk, you 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 once is enough. Once is enough, and if you go a second time, it's really really hard. I'm not saying it can't be done, and maybe they'll prove me wrong, but I feel like it's really really hard to capture the magic the second yeah. time, and instead you get something that's kind of annoying, kind of derivative, and kind of kind of boring. Well, I hope that's not the case for Guardians too. But uh, we'll see. I think, I think there's more than a one. There was more than one note in that movie. Mm-hmm. Whereas I felt like Ant Man was kind of one note, good one note, but it was kind of one note to me. And I feel like from Deadpool, I know what this movie is. I want to watch it. It looks like fun. It's. But it's it kind of reminds me of like Ted. I never needed a Ted too. Yeah. Well, 
let me propose this, um, and this ties into the next story I wanted to bring up. But uh, what if, what if Deadpool was on a team in his next cinematic outing, and that, what if that, what, what? I was gonna say that would work better. I think. Yeah, and uh, of course the team I'm talking about is the uh, the X Force team because they're they're I guess some concept art came out this week um, for a potential lineup which. It makes a lot of sense that they would go with this lineup. It is Cable, of course. Uh, you got to have, you probably got to have Cable in X in X Force, um, Domino, Warpath, and one of my favorite X Men, Cannonball. And then there's this chick who's like this blonde chick that I I don't know who she is. Uh, I think she, it's supposed to be. I think that's supposed to be a mystery, but uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, this potential cool. lineup, like the concept art's cool. It looks cool. Again, I think it's one of these things where they're gonna make an X Force movie. I mean, why not? Fo like Fox has the X Men, and no, I get that. I get that, and I know why they're doing it. I'm not, but it, it's just one of those things that strikes me as. I don't know that X Force was that popular of a comic, and now you're gonna make it into a movie. Like, uh, there was runs that were pretty popular. Yes, but my favorite run is not the run they're gonna make. So, what's your favorite run? My favorite run doesn't have any of those characters. Oh, really? My favorite run is the uh, the run that kind of ended and then turned into X Statics. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, was that Peter Milligan writing that? Yes. That it, it was amazing. It was awesome. It was great, but mm -hmm. they will never make that. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. If they make that, they should make it as a TV show, like HBO or Netflix, but they'll never make that. Well, isn't don't they have a New Mutant series in development for TV? Or a movie? I, I don't know. One of the two. I think they're developing New Mutants also. And then they're also talking about like a Hellfire Club TV show or something like that. But I don't I know. Think, I'm, I'm very cautious about the X-Force. Uh, I what, worried. Do you want to say about that? Well, I was going to say, I just worried the same thing about all the Marvel movies, which is the same thing I worry about all these new Star Wars movies. This oversaturation dilutes your product and also makes me kind of bored potentially for some of these movies where like Civil War or Captain America Civil War looks really cool mm -hmm. but it also just looks like another Avengers movie and it also looks like well okay you got some new characters but have unless it's a really good story and a really good movie it's just more of the same and then you're just watering down your product well like, like it's yeah. no longer it's because they're doing so many so quickly there's no and i get it because they're financially success, successful but there's no longer that excitement of like there's a captain america movie coming out you're like well there's a, another captain movie america movie coming out because it's another year yeah that's well, I, I think the Captain America movie especially it was really just bolstered by the directing talent that was on that movie. And I was just going to say about X-Force, the reason I'm pretty cautious about a potential X-Force movie is, do you know who's supposed to direct that movie? Um, no, tell me. Jeff Wadlow, the guy that did the second Kick-Ass movie. I'm not that, – oh. that's not a very inspired choice for me. Well, that's where projects go to die. Yeah. So yeah. I I don't know. Any, I think he did like a, one of those uh, uh, dance movies too before that, like Step Up or something. So he's, a so. so he's like a competent commercial director. Uh, I don't know. I, th I thought Kick-Ass 2 is sorely lacking. That's the only movie I've seen of his. But I honestly haven't seen Kick-Ass 2 because I just heard so many bad things about it. What I mean is he can make a competent movie. Like He can make a movie. 
but it's just going to be make a movie. Yeah, it's just not a very good movie. Right. I mean, yeah, he's he's got a few credits under his belt. Um, but yeah, that would be cool if uh, Deadpool did join that team eventually, because obviously him and Cable have a lot of history. And uh, one of my favorite X, probably my favorite X Force run was uh, the recent Rick Remender, Uncanny X Force run. Did Did you read the uh, whole X Dad X run and everything like that? No, I did not. I was I was out of. I was not uh, getting a lot of comics at that time. That was like mid '90s, right? No, that was like. It was that late '90s? I feel like that was like early 2000s. Oh really? Yeah. Um, but I would recommend they have. I think they have an omni an omnibus that collects like the X Force issues and the Ecstatics issues together. Mm-hmm. Basically, like his whole run. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, I've heard good things. It 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 was a completely different direction from the series, so yeah. it's really, they changed it to a different title. Yeah, but it and, was it was very cool stuff that they were doing that was very very much outside of like normal comic book. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what I've heard about it, and uh, that's obviously evidenced by the artist they got for it. Yeah, Mike Allred is not a I think what you'd call in a a traditional artist. No, but it was, I mean, it was a great pairing, and it was great work. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, I don't know. I'm cautiously excited about that X-Force movie. We'll see, though. Um, staying on the superhero train, uh, did you see the Daredevil Season 2 photos? Saw, saw them. Interesting. What do you think? Some interesting shots. Uh, I don't what do want. Think, what do you think of how the Punisher looks? I don't want to get into too much spoiler stuff, but I'm from the shots that I saw of him. I was kind of meh. Mm-hmm. But who knows where we go with it? These are just simple stills, so. Yeah, the one they threw out there was that Entertainment uh, Weekly one again, and uh, it's like super well lit, which I really hope the show does not look like that. Right. Again, I, based on the first season, I'm willing to to uh, assume that that isn't the most accurate. That maybe it was the fo- the photo as opposed to the TV show, but. Yeah, the the lighting it seemed very bright. It also seemed Daredevils in chains, which just seemed bizarre. Well, that's out of the I think that's out of the Garth Ennis uh Punisher run where he okay. like he it, it's a similar scene where he has like Daredevil chained to a rooftop and they're having an encounter, but um yeah, I'm it's also actually it's it, also, actually oh go ahead. Well, it's also just weird to see that Daredevil costume because as much as that's his costume, we didn't see it at all. Yeah, I know. In the first season and then to see it so well lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm really hoping that's something to like. Yeah, I, I... I don't think it is. Yeah. I think it's a promo shot, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. hope yeah. that... Uh, I Well... I was reading the article, and actually, speaking of the lighting, they were saying that um, th- because it's a different showrunner, uh, Marco Ramirez is, and uh, Marco Ramirez is actually two showrunners, I think, teaming up on it. But it was, it's Marco Ramirez and Doug Petrie taking over for Stephen Denight, and um, they actually were mentioning in the article that uh, they. I guess they kind of heard like some people were complaining that the first season was too dark and that this, this show is still like this season is going to still be dark, but it's going to be a little, how can you make, Oh my God. No. How can you make a not dark season about Punisher and Electra? Well, no, I think they were literally talking about the lighting of the show. Then they're stupid. Yeah, I know. I love the look of the first season, so I, I'm I, they better I'm stay with that. Angry. What? 
I'm angry. Oh, you're angry. angry. I can see it on your face, JC. I you're know. extremely angry. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Punisher actually looks in that show because obviously he looks like a regular dude. He looks like just like a Marine with like his shaved head and stuff. And I don't know, that's not really like the Frank Castle that I imagine. So he's going to have to win me over a little bit, I think. I like that slicked back hair look that the Punisher has. Well, you know, if you want, we can get Thomas Jane back. Hey, I'm fine with that. Um, actually, I'm going to talk about Thomas Jane in a second because uh, he's in a new show that I'm not going to talk it's about good, it too much. It's a good segue. Because you haven't seen it yet. Um, but I am, of course, talking about The Expanse, uh, the new sci-fi show that uh, debuted last month, I think. And uh, there's like four episodes out now. And, um, man, that show is incredible, man. I'm not going to go into any plot things. You, you still need to watch it, but it, it has yeah. Thomas Jane in it. There's four episodes out, right? And I've heard a mm -hmm. things about it. And I think next week we should do a full kind of breakdown because, yeah, I, I plan on watching it because it sounds awesome. I've heard – the praise that I've heard is – it's the new Battlestar Galactica, and if that is true, then sign me up. Uh, yep, I would have to agree with that. I think it's a very, uh, very akin. It's on the same quality level as Battlestar. I, that also makes me think we should do a Battlestar show. Uh, yeah. I watched the first season of that, I think, and I, I don't know why I left off, but I just never made it through the entire series. I need to get back to that. Yes, 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 yes. But um, yeah, that was a that was I, a good one. I have a Star Wars question for you. Okay. Is it a spoilery question? Do I need to issue the spoiler warning? No, it's I'm pretty a, sure everyone's seen Star Wars by the way, <laughs> by now. They've only made a billion dollars so far, so yeah. Got to get the other, you know, you. People left on Earth that haven't seen it. No, it was actually about the books. Oh, okay. I was talking to someone, and they they just read Darth Plagueis, and I was yeah. wondering if that was old canon or new canon. Uh, I think technically that one is old canon okay. because the ones there was a book written before I think like Disney. It was either before or like right around the time that Disney acquired uh, Star Wars, which was uh, called Tarkin. Yeah. And it was it was the uh, you know the Grand Moff's early life and like rise to his uh, status in Episode Four and that was a really good book that was in canon and then I think but it was by the same writer I think that did Tarkin um, wrote Darth Plagueis and that like I think there's a few things in there that they that kind of excludes it from being canon now but um, I think they still like. They still recognize that character, and I think if you want to read, uh, if you want to read these about um, Sidious's master, then yeah, you could you could definitely read that and, and pretty much get the gist. I don't think they're gonna like redo that book, you know. Like they're, they're, right. they're right. Well, I think they're gonna stay with so that. The reason the reason I ask this is there have been a number of articles that have come out in the last few days thinking that. Supreme Leader Snoke could be or could not be Darth Plagueis. Oh, probably that's not. Probably not. But and I've seen articles that said he's probably not. Just like the whole uh, Luke Skywalker being evil thing was probably not going to be true. And mm -hmm. yeah, if you haven't seen Star Wars at this point and you're listening to our podcast, kill yourself. Yeah. Now uh, that's yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Hopefully, I'm gonna see it again this week, and I want to go see it on the hundred foot IMAX. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Well, do it yourself. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. So, uh, did you? What did you read this week? Well, I finally finished The Man in the High Castle. Okay. Uh, which is great. Now I want to go burn through the TV show. It's, it was very interesting the way 
that book played out and the way it ended up. Mm -hmm. I could see how it very easily lends itself to an ongoing show because it doesn't, it, it leaves you enough open endedness to it where you can keep going with it or you can end it whenever you want. Mm -hmm. In the same way that the show, in the same way that the book did, which is kind of cool. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the show because certain elements that end the book are in the show. Uh huh. So it's obviously the building to something, but it'll be interesting to see if they're built to the same ending, which would end the show, or if they go somewhere else with it. Yeah. Um, and then I started a uh, a song of ice and fire. Ah, finally. And I did about half the first. Uh, I did a half Game of Thrones in about two days. Nice. So, what do you think of the uh, the method of storytelling in that book? Well, I I love the I love the method. I think it's a very cool way to go through these different characters and you feel associated with the different characters much better than like in the TV show where you don't get as much screen time, if you will, yeah. with certain characters. I'm amazed also based on the vitriol I've heard from certain people. I won't name names about the TV show, how close it is to the book at this point. Obviously, it changes as it goes on, yeah. but uh, at this point, it's very much very close. To Season season. one is very faithful. Yeah, and I think, and I think, from what I've heard of the books, I can I know why they had to change things. Yeah, so it's not surprising. Yeah, well, books, the books are all. I mean, books are always going to be better if they're the original source material. I think. Because you get more. Well, what you're saying that's the, the yeah that's the best format to experience something. In. Yeah. Generally, the well the original content generally, generally yeah, the books are always better. There are exceptions to the rule that what that's what makes them the rule. Yeah. Um, and for those of you that uh, haven't read the the book series and have only seen the TV show, the method we're talking about is the the uh, way that. Uh, Martin writes each chapter through a different character's perspective. So each chapter is just one character um, experiencing what, whatever's happening at the time. Um, and uh, yeah, the show obviously jumps around way more. And it's, uh, the, of course, they have to do that. But I, I just love, like, that's the first time I've actually read a, a book that utilized that that method. And um, I really thought he did uh, did well with that. I think it's. I yeah. I I agree. I think it might. I think it's probably the first time I've seen that in a book. There, I've I've I have read a number of books that use different storytelling techniques. Kind of reminds me of, for instance, like Tar Tarantino, who will use these different techniques where he'll, you know, move around in time in Pulp Fiction, mm -hmm. which is a cool technique as long as it's not, and, and, and I, I'm sh with this technique, it works a lot better and doesn't come off cheesy, but like the Tarantino thing can come off cheesy if it's done wrong. Yeah. And there's a lot of, a lot of different techniques people do in books where if you do it really, really well, it works really, really well. And if you don't, it comes off as hackneyed. So if you do it really, really well, it comes off really, really well. That's what you're saying. Fuck you. Okay. I, 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 get, I, think, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Thanks, JC. Uh, so that's all you've been reading. <laughs> Love you too, buddy. <laughs> this, this fucking guy. This guy. This guy. Ah, uh, cool, man. Well, we're definitely going to talk more about that. And and I wanted to say one thing. I am glad that you got to watch the show first because I think you're going to like the show more seeing it first, which is why I'm glad I'm watching The Strain um, before I read the books 
because I love that show. And I feel like if I read the books already, I'd be having the same problem with Game of Thrones because I, I think the books are insanely better. So I have to ask about the strain. There's a book, yeah. there's books and comic books. Yeah. Yeah, and I've actually been getting the comics. So oh, after yeah. I watch the show, I'm gonna read the comics first and then read the books. I know it's it's a whole it's a whole thing. But I was thinking, probably the best way that's the best way to do it because if if I read the books before something else, I'm gonna end up liking that more. Right. Well, and and I and I definitely feel like the strain much more so than Game of Thrones is something where the show. Is very good if you watch the show, but I'm sure if you read the book or the comic first, it makes the show seem terrible. Yeah. Whereas Game of Thrones, yes, I know what you mean. The book, like, where the books are better because they're books, but still, you the show is a really well done show. Uh, yeah, no, I I recognize that the show is well. I mean, e- even even it's a better done. Sh- it's a better produced and acted show than The Strain is. Uh, me, uh, yeah, but I think The Strain is a better TV show. I really do. I, I just think Game of Thrones, the TV show, has too many characters, and there's there's too much going on, and you just never really are able to sit with uh a character long enough to to really get the impact of what's going on and uh obviously the book solves that because you have an entire chapter of just delving into their heads but i think the strain having a smaller cast of characters um helps out a lot with that but no i recognize game of thrones is is a well done tv show but it it could be I just think it could be better if it was uh, adapting something that wasn't so Leviathan in its characters. I mean, it's just got a huge cast of characters, and it just can't do those characters justice with the format. Well, no. I mean, of course. But thank God Game of Thrones is made into a TV show and not a movie. Oh yeah, for sure. No, I think there's no way they could do even a series of movies. There's no way. I mean, right. they can barely fit everything in with uh, with a TV show. Right. No, exactly. And so it's a cool TV show, and I think the TV show works. It clearly because it's got a huge, huge following. You know. You think you think Game of Thrones works? You think it it's works. you think it's been successful? Slightly. Yeah. So. You might be right about that. Maybe you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're tired. Um, you came I, back from New York today. I'll give I, you a little I bit of... I'm tired and drunk. I'll give you a little, cut you a little slack there, JC. All right. Well, um, I just had uh, one quickie to talk about real quick, but uh, I really didn't read a lot over the break. Uh, I did. I, I've been trying to kind of catch up on some uh, some spider titles. Uh, I've talked about a few over the last couple of weeks. I've caught up on Amazing, and um, there's all these like titles that spun off after uh, the the Spider Verse event, and um, and I was reading uh, Silk, which was a title that was basically created before it, it, the character was created um, in Dan Slott's run going into Spider-Verse. And uh, she got her own series after Spider-Verse happened. Um, and uh, basically the series, it's like seven issues before they relaunched it. I haven't read the relaunched issues, but... Um, like the the pre uh, the pre secret war uh, secret wars stuff is what I read and uh, basically like they're they're fun comics um, they're written by uh, Robbie Thompson and art is by Stacy Lee and it's just like it's just light fun comics I mean very like obviously you know it, it's borrowing heavily from Spider Man and taking its cues from just how that comic works and it. And uh, basically, the 
the common theme through Silk is she was her her like backstory is she was um she was basically like she basically locked herself in a bunker for ten years because she needed to like shield her her spider powder or powers because she was bit she was bitten by the same spider that bit Peter. And so she was in this bunker for 10 years because someone told her that this family of uh, crazy people called the Inheritors, which uh, are the villains of Spider-Verse, were the someone told her that they were they would find her and her family if she didn't lock herself in this bunker and like shield herself. So she's in there for 10 years and then comes out like in uh you know, right before Spider Verse happens, and obviously it's kind of a fish out of water story. So, this series just kind of continues that, and she's looking for a family because they're missing, and uh, just kind of like she's kind of learning how to fight crime in New York, and uh, it's just you know fun, light, lightweight comics. You know, just um, very like quick reads, but it's good. I'm glad I caught up on that one. So, yeah. Um, I'm hoping to get into, uh, spider Gwen and the new carnage series as well, because, uh, I do loves that Mike's that Mike Perkins art. Yeah. I was wanting to read spider Gwen as well. So maybe we can talk about that next week. All right, let's do it. All right, peeps. Well, we wanted this to be a quick episode, um, right Happy for the new year. year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Yeah. Hopefully, are, 2016 is going to be good. What are you doing New Year's Eve? What am I doing? Um, are, you, are you hoping to quit, kiss at midnight? And please don't tell me it's Alberta. <sighs> you had to bring that up. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing for New Year's Eve yet. But it is two nights from now. And my buddy Chris is in town. So something good. Something good, JC. We'll see. Hey, when does hockey start up, by the way? You're supposed to know that. We've we've had a conspicuous lack of hockey talk on this show for the last like four episodes. Mostly because we got our asses knocked out of the playoffs uh real quick. Playoffs. Playoffs. Yeah. Our one win season. Yeah, we, we weren't even sniffing for the playoffs. But anyways, um, happy new year, people. Uh, you can find us at thecomicstew.com. Email us, uh, thecomicstew at gmail.com uh, with any questions or comments. Uh, JC will go through those with a fine tooth comb. And uh, our Twitter is thecomicstew. And that way you guys can ask what my New Year's plans are since Aaron doesn't give a shit. Yeah, obviously. Um, go check out JC's Instagram. You've been taking a lot of pictures lately? A little bit slower in December with the holidays and stuff, but a fair you take amount. a bunch of New York pictures? Yeah. How, how, uh, how much were you actually in the city, by the way? Uh, you were... like half, about half the time. Okay, so because you, you were staying at somewhere outside the city, right? Like upstate New York. Yeah, I got, I got, I flew into the city, stayed there for a couple of days, went upstate, and then was back in the city like the last day and flew out of the city again. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're in that city, uh, making me wake up at the crack of dawn to record the last episode. That was fun. Hey, you know. You know. Um, you know, um, no. <laughs> all right. Well, happy new year's people. Hope, uh, you ring in 2016 epically and, uh, yeah. You got anything else, JC? No, I don't care. You don't care. You're drunk and tired. I don't care about new year's Eve. Oh, you will. You're not working new year's Eve. Are you? I'm actually not for like the first time in years not working New Year's Eve, but I work at 7 a.m. on New Year's Day. No so. way. That's even worse. Right. You should work New Year's Eve because you'll be off at 11 at least. I wow, would. That to. is terrible. You know. Ah. 
they they realize that I'm a responsible enough person that I will wake up and go to work even if I'm still drunk. Mm. I, I say I say you just plan on not even going to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting behind a desk that that wouldn't really work, would it? No, and I'm not even sitting. No, standing. Whatever. Whatevs. All right. Thanks, people. See you next year.